it to her. What's the first thing you see? Look around and see what you see around you. Can you see your hands? It's so dark. What do you feel is around you? No, it's like a void. Do you hear anything? Not really, it's just like this emptiness. Can you move around? Yeah. Move around and see what you come across. Okay. It's almost like stars. It looks like ripples of like stars on a galaxy. Are you looking up? No, in front of me. In front of you. I'm walking towards this, looks like sparkly, shimmery stars. Okay. And walk towards it some more. It feels like I'm in space. Do you feel anything below you? It will clear up. The darkness will clear up. Do you feel that you're wearing anything? Uh -uh. I don't feel clothes. No feel clothes. Can you move around easily? Uh huh. What does it feel like to move around? Very comfortable. Kind of like at home. Soft. Very peaceful. I feel like I'm on a planet. I don't know why I keep on thinking of Venus or Jupiter. It's like I'm seeing some rain. Mm hmm. And describe more what you see. Are you flying around the planet, or are you in the planet? Where are you? It feels like I'm uh, like on the ring of Saturn, and I'm like on one of the rings, and I'm looking out over the galaxy, and I'm seeing all the stars. And <laughs> they're actually not stars; they're actually people. People just don't know that. The stars? Yeah. That you see in front of you? Yeah, they're people. Okay. And do you feel male or female, or do you feel any kind of gender? No, not really. I just, I just feel very, I don't know why I say it, just me, I'm just me. Okay. Do you feel like you're an old ring or a young ring? All that comes to my head is I'm middle age. <laughs> okay. okay. And what do you, the the stars or people in front of you, you say that they don't know that they're people. No, they know they're people. But I think what I was trying to say is so many times people look up to us and they see us in the distance and they're glistening in the sky. And they say, well, look at all those beautiful stars. And they don't seem to understand we're not stars, we're people. The, the stars are people. 
Okay, the stars are people. So, <clears throat> you're a ring in Saturn. Mm -hmm. From from what you are, but from afar, people are looking at you and thinking that you're stars, but you're a person. Mm -hmm. And what do you do all day as this person? I send messages. I help guide people. What messages do you send? Oh, that they're loved and they're wanted. That they're on the right path. Okay. And do you, are people receiving your messages? How do you feel about the people? Oh, um, you know, some do and some don't, you know. It's their evolution, it's their journey, you know, and I'm just a small piece in that puzzle. And when they're ready to hear the message, they go forward. So I just keep telling the same message until they decide to listen. And who, who, who do you tell the message to? Just well, there are many planets, but mostly right now I'm assigned to Earth. There's a lot of earthly souls that I've been assigned to, and so I talk to them, and I try to show them things and give them messages through people or things or different things like that, you know. I was assigned to some people, so I kind of keep an eye on them. And tell me about the people that you were assigned to. Tell me about them. Hmm. They're just different people. For some reason, why did Jacob come in my head? What do you tell Jacob? Uh, I try to tell Jacob he's a brilliant young man. And that he's got so much purpose in this world. And he was always wanted. He was always loved. But he's too angry. Okay. It's just really sad. But, you know, some people just have angry souls for a while. And he's got an angry soul. And how do you tell people this, these messages? What do you do with yourself? I talk to their hearts. I whisper to their hearts. And how do you do that as a ring in Saturn? Well, I have energy, and so I send my energy vibrations down to their heart. And that's why sometimes when people feel heavy in their heart, that's actually me. It's actually me touching their heart. That's why sometimes when your heart feels heavy and you feel sad, that's me. If your heart feels light and fluffy, that's me, you know, because I can I can influence the heart. So that's what I try to do is talk to your heart. Of all the planets, why are you assigned to Earth? <sighs> For me right now, Earth is the most complicated. A lot of the other planets, they're less complicated. They're they're more free and spirited and more evolving and you know and. They don't get muddled down, and Earth is just, it's really sad. It's a sad place. So when people choose to go there, they know they're going to a sad place. But they, they need us to kind of help them once they get there. Where do they come from, the people? Once they get to Earth, where do they come from? From the stars. From different planets. Some people get tired of hanging out up here, so they want to go hang out somewhere else, so they pick a planet and go hang out. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about what they do with themselves when they pick a planet and hang out? A lot of them want to learn something for some crazy reason. So they, Especially Earth. For some reason with Earth, a lot of people choose harder lessons it's like for some reason they want the challenge or something so a lot of people that go to earth live really challenging complex lives and it's just it's kind of sad to me sometimes i wish that you know people didn't want to go through those experiences that they do and 
So, but I do get this much. When they come back, they acknowledge us. They let us know what they learn, and we kind of evolve too, you know. But it's still sad. Why? Why? Why do you think people choose such tough lives in Earth? I've wondered that. Because sometimes I think Earth itself is, it's, I don't know, it's like that kind of a planet, you know? It's like, if you want a hard, tough lesson to learn, go to Earth. If you want something easy, go to Pluto. I don't know. It's just, Earth is just kind of this really complex, interesting, it's like Earth never, it's evolving, but it's not evolving, and it's just sad. So you send messages to Earth? Do you use the same messages over and over again, or do you send new messages? What are some of the other messages that you send to the people of Earth? Well, sometimes people that go to Earth, we call them the enlightened ones. So we make sure that we let them know that they've arrived, because sometimes ones that are really enlightened, they get kind of confused um, when they get there. And then they move on to try to change Earth's structure itself. You know, like Gandhi was enlightened, and, you know, um, Jesus was enlightened, you know, those type of people. And um, we help those people try to change the dynamics and the the soul kind of of earth, you know, and sometimes it gets better for a while and then it kind of goes backwards. I think that's why a lot of people keep going back there that are enlightened to keep infusing the love and the kindness and the happiness that needs to be in that planet. What do you spend all your time on the as a ring, or do you also go into the planet? I spend most of my time as a ring. I, I, I don't, I, I've gone a couple of times, but the times that I've gone is only when um, they've been special. Like, there's people that I've been assigned to, and, like, they get into a situation that's, like, really bad, and sometimes I'll be told by the higher person to kind of go down there and protect them during that really rough period. Um, because, you know, we all have our time, but there are certain times where we have to be extra protected, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I don't like doing that. It's icky down there. I don't like it down there. I don't feel good when I'm down there, and I like to sit, hang up up here. And when you go, When you go down to Earth, what do you go down as? Do you go down as anything? No, I'm just a little, you know, if, if you were ever to see me, it would almost look like a little bit, bit like a um, flickering light or something like that. You might see a shimmer or something, but um, really people don't see me. I'm supposed to be kind of like the silent shadow in the room that kind of, you know, moves things around or shifts things um, just to kind of avoid, you know, like, kind of like when you're driving and you're like, oh, my God, how dare I avoid that car? I should have been hit by that car, you know. I kind of do those things. And so, is this your job? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is what you do every day? Mm-hmm. Okay. And a, a majority of the time, um, you're sending messages to people. Do you go inside of Saturn itself and do anything? Uh, I just hang out on the ring. I don't need any sleep. I don't need anything. I just hang out some time. Do you have family in this? Not really. I mean, we're a collective. We spend time together, and we share information and share experiences. But for, say, like a mom or dad, we don't have that. We're just all higher selves. Uh, Is each ring, are you all the rings, or each ring its own entity? Each ring is a song. There's many layers to us. Okay. And what does the collective think about? Does everybody have a different focus? Or are they all focusing on Earth? 
Um, no, we all have different signs. Like some of us are assigned more to Pluto or different universes or something like that. Um, some people are, like for me, I tend to be more earthbound, but sometimes I'll still get outer sections. Um, and generally speaking, those are people that have like multiple lives. And it's like sometimes I'll be following them through their um, evolution throughout. And um, But, um, yeah, generally speaking, we kind of get assigned to certain areas, and we kind of work within that area because we learn that area. Who, is that, who makes the assignments? Uh, it's kind of a hierarchy, you know, to a little bit. You know, it's kind of like, for me, it's almost like you're born into it. And... Um, then we as a collective find out who has more experience in different areas, so we kind of work that way, because ultimately we're there to help the soul, and if we don't have experience somewhere, why would we work with that soul? And do you have a lot of souls that you speak to and protect? It depends from time to time. Sometimes I could have, you know, thousands of them, you know, and some of them times I just have just a few hundred. It just depends on, you know, what's happening in that time frame. And what, what's the what's the overall end goal of what you do? Is there an end goal? No, I don't think there's an end goal. It's always I'm always going to be like that that guiding force in people's lives when they choose to, to go learn lessons because, you know, for me, it's that is my purpose is to help be that silent voice and that, you know, reassurance in people's lives that they're going in the right direction and kind of protecting them. Is there a common theme in the type of lessons that the people you watch over and protect go through? Um, I guess for me, a lot of it is addictions. Um, you know, um, I spend a lot of time with people that have a, a lot of addiction issues and just kind of helping those that, you know, because it's kind of sad sometimes because I know that when certain people go down, they're not going to survive their lesson. And so kind of being there when those things happen for their souls and then being there for those helping them when they get to learn that lesson and move beyond their addictions. But for some reason, I tend to understand the soul pretty well when they're struggling with those type of things. And why do uh, these people you watch and protect uh, choose addiction as a theme? Is that your specialty? I don't know if it's a specialty. It's just, for me, I have great empathy for these people. And um, some of the souls, I don't get to meet a lot of them before they choose their path. But some I have met, for some reason, they're drawn to that. It's like maybe a past life or a past experience or something that they're drawn back to that sickness and that darkness and that void and um, like I said some of them is just really sad because I know that some of them I've met, spent many lives with because they've never learned the lesson they just kind of repetitively go back to that insanity of that lifestyle and that craziness and the, the void and you know and other ones I've been able to rejoice because they've gone there They've experienced and got whatever they wanted out of it, and they came home and never went back. Are there people who you have recurring help with? Are, are there any of them present in your life? Hmm. I don't know who Joseph is, but I know he's been around a lot. He hangs around. I haven't quite got to know him. I just know that he's been around me a long time. And he's one of the people who continue to choose the addiction theme? No, he succeeded. It's like 
He was really sad. I kind of called him my Eeyore. He was really sad when he chose this path. And he went down there, and um, I was really scared for him. And he overcame it. He had a great life, and just a beautiful life. And he learned his lesson, and he came back. And I don't know why he's just kind of hung out with me, you know. We don't talk much, but he's always just kind of in the background sitting there watching me and listening to me. And I don't know. Okay. Now, let's leave that scene and move forward to an important day. A day that you consider to be important when something's happened. Have you moved forward to that important day? Yeah. Tell me about what's happening. I'm giving birth to my daughter. Okay. What do you see? <laughs> I see my dad. I see the midwife. I see that stupid fire extinguisher above my head. I remember reading that in the Reader's Digest. Okay. And what is what is happening in this this labor? I feel I have to be punished for this. By who? I'm just a bad person. So I should feel all the pain in the world. What, why do you feel you're a bad person? Because I'm a drunk. In this life? I'm a whore. My daughter was in the stomach for three months, loaded. Sixteen. I deserve to suffer. Mm-hmm. And as you're giving birth, what are you seeing? My dad taking pictures as her head's crying. Mm-hmm. What does the baby look like? She looked like a little turtle. Okay. Did she describe her health? Oh, she's healthy. She's got all the little toes. But oh, Lord Jesus, that girl came out screaming. <laughs> and she's just screaming and screaming and screaming. Let's move forward. To another important day, a day that's really intense with emotion. What do you see? My suicide. What are you doing? I've got my mom's pool. I ordered dinner. I took a shower so I'd be clean. I'm pouring all the pills in the bowl. These are potato chips. There's no feeling. There's no pain. So much peace. And where are the pills now? They're going in my mouth. Do you feel them going down your throat? Yep. Where are you at? I'm in a motel in Everett. Okay. What do you see around you? 
watching the show. Yeah, I have a little girl crying. Who's a little girl? She says she's me. She's telling me she doesn't want to die. She's saying, save me. What do you do? I try to throw up, but I can't. Are you by yourself? Yeah. So then what happens? I call my daughter. I tell Sammy I've done it again. What does she say? She tells a friend to call 911 and talks to me. Trying to keep me awake. And then what happens? The medics show up. There's a really nice one. But I keep telling him he's hurting me. He keeps telling me he's sorry. Do you come out of it alive? The next morning I do. Sammy fed me liquid charcoal all night to keep her mommy alive. How do you feel about that? Guilty. Yeah. Not her job. Do you say anything to her? I've tried. I've tried. Now let's leave that scene and move forward to another very important day. A day with very high, intense feelings. A day that you consider to be, to be important when something is happening. Have you moved forward to that day? Mm-hmm. What is happening? I'm graduating. Describe, describe what you're graduating from and what is happening. I'm graduating from medical assistant. Okay. My mommy gets to see me walk in a cap and gown. Okay. And what are you what are you doing now? Feeling hurt. Because of what? Rick's being an ass again. He doesn't want anything to do with my family. He feels I'm being selfish. What are they doing? They're trying to celebrate me going to school, but he thinks it's a waste of time. Why? Because I'm a waste of time. What is in your hand? Okay. Now, we've gone forward to the last day of your life in this lifetime that we're watching. What do you see? I see Joel's. Describe the jewels. She's my best friend. She's holding my hand and telling me it's okay to go home. I've got so much love and understanding. 
room is full of people in recovery. And it's sad. Describe the room. I'm on a bed. It's got really soft candles. Really peaceful music playing. Yeah. Are your children and grandchildren there? Emma and Chris are there. Caitlin didn't choose to be there. Her husband wouldn't let her come. Jacob and Sammy never came back in my life. But I know that the people that love me are here. I love my Emma. What what messages do you say to the people around you? I'll always love her. She has always been a light in my life. And I'm so grateful that God gave her to me. I thank Jules for coming back into my life and loving me. And being there for me when I needed her. I thank all my recovery family for loving me and not letting me die alone. Now uh, you're, you're not experiencing any physical symptoms when you're seeing this scene. Now whatever happened has already happened. And you are on the other side of it. From that position, you can look back at your entire life and see it from a different perspective. Now, every life has a lesson and a purpose. As you look at the life, what did you learn from it? That I was always lovable. And that I got to serve my purpose. What did you think the purpose of that lifetime is? One, to heal myself. To be a healer to others. Okay. You were on the spirit side. What do you, what do you see around you? What are they doing? I'm hugging my mom so much. She looks so beautiful and so healthy. What is she wearing? <laughs> it looks like a Lumu, like, dress or something. Can you describe what's on her, sh- her feet? She's got these, like, baby doll shoes on. Did she do anything with her hair? What color outfit is she wearing? She's got a purple flower in her hair, and her hair's long. It's beautiful. And what about your aunt? Patty's so beautiful, so healthy. Just hugging her and holding her face. It's been so long since I've seen you. What do you say to her and what do they say to you? Just thank you for saying goodbye to me, Patty. I wanted to see you so bad. But Mom and Dad 
what mommy see you. But I know you came and said goodbye to me and thank you for that. What's, what's happening? She's just smiling at me. Did she say anything back to you? She tells me she loves me. My mom's telling me how proud she is of me. And I was never a disappointment to her. That she's sorry if I ever felt that from her. Is there anything that you want to ask your mother or your aunt in the spirit world? Mom, do you have any love and forgiveness for Caitlin? What did you say? Told me that is one of her biggest regrets. She wanted to make things right with Caitlin and she never got the chance. And she knew that Caitlin was with her when she was dying. Are you guys still embracing each other? We're sitting on a bench right now, just holding hands. You and your mom, or you and your mom and Patty? No, just me and mom. Mm -hmm. And what's around the bench? There's a, a stream in front of us and some flowers. We're just listening to the water. She says it reminds her. Of when we let her ashes go. What did you think about that? <laughs> she giggles because um, she said she was definitely present because when we let her, Tasha was the first one to let her ashes go, and when she did, she blew right back into that, Tasha's face with all her ashes. She just wanted to hug Tasha one more time. And that was her way of hugging Tasha. Is there any is there anybody else around the bench? I see my grandma. I don't remember her much, but she seems happy. What is she wearing? Yeah. She's got her little dress that she used to wear when we were kids. and She has an apron on. She looks just like I remember when we were kids. And she would sing in the kitchen and dance. Is, is she saying anything to you? Mm -hmm. She's just walking by the bench? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is there anything else that you and your mother are talking about? Not really. It's just feeling her spirit. Just knowing she's okay. There... Is there anybody else around? Or any... Anything else about the scene that you notice? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask you to drift and float away from the scene, leaving your mom, your grandma, and your your aunt Patty there to continue their own path. And I'm going to ask you to move away from the lifetime that you just died in as well. Now you can either move forward or backwards to another appropriate time and place. 
And as you're floating and drifting, you're at another time and place. What do you what do you see? It looks like a hospital. Where where are you? I'm in the corridor. What are you what are you wearing? Looks like scrubs or something. I look like a doctor or a nurse or something. Are you male or female? I'm male. Okay. Are you looking at anybody? No, I'm just looking down the hall. Okay. What is happening around you? Nothing really. Just people moving around. Just being on the hustle and look. Does anybody notice you? I don't feel like they do. do you, are you able to talk to anyone? Sure, I can. I'm just kind of there. Where's Lucy? She's a nurse. What's Lucy doing? I guess she's a cardiac nurse. She's working with a patient. What are you doing? Oh, Lucy's asking me to look at his labs to make sure his meds are correct. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, I'm looking at it. It looks like he just had heart surgery. We're making sure that the thinner is okay because we don't want to give them too much blood thinner, so we're checking. Mm -hmm. What is your job title? Are you working right now or are you a patient? What are you doing in the hospital? I'm a cardiologist. Okay. And what do you do all day? In your job? Well, I work on people's hearts. I specialize in heart surgery and, you know, you know making sure my bypasses and heart transplants and stuff like that. Okay. And I want you to now leave that seat and move forward to a very important day in this life. A day you consider to be important when something is happening. What is happening in this day? My dad's dying of a heart attack. I want to save him. Where is he at? He's on the floor at home. Okay. And what is happening? I feel helpless. I'm angry. I just want to save him. Don't take my daddy. Okay. What do you do next? I'm screaming for my mom to get help. I'm beating on his chest. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? My dad's dead. Said I'm going to be a doctor. I'm never going to feel this way again. And you decide you you make that career decision at home after this happens, or where do you make that? I'm sitting at kneeling in front of my dad's body. I never want to feel helpless again. Okay. What's happening to your mom? Mom's devastated. She's crying. I can't 
kind of a comforter. So I agree with myself. I should have saved them. Why didn't you save them? I didn't know how. Let's move away from this day and go to another really intense day in this lifetime. One that has a lot of emotion for you. What do you see? I'm an intern. Intern for what? For cardiology. I'm looking at this man's heart. Or middle or Looking at an amazement. Okay. Feeling the empowerment of knowing that I can learn to make something different in someone's life. You feel, do you feel old or young as an intern? Oh, I'm young. Yeah. Okay. And Describe what you look like. I have blonde hair. Maybe blue eyes. I'm clean shaven. Not real muscular, but built. Probably about 160 pounds. So you're a man or woman? Amen. Amen. Okay. And do you, where do you live? Describe where you live. I'm in Boston. Okay. Can you describe your neighborhood? Dorm housing. What kind of dorm housing? A bunch of us residents live together. It's really stinky. A lot of dirty socks. Sweatiness. Go ahead and go inside the housing. What do you What do you see? A bunch of rooms. They're really small inside. You know, two twin beds, a desk. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what do you do all day in your dorm room? I really don't spend much time here. I'm, I'm either at the hospital or I'm sleeping. Okay. Do you have a roommate? Yeah, that's Bernie. I don't see him very often. He's in a different specialty. Okay. What is your specialty? Cardiology. Cardiology. What's his specialty? OB. OB. Okay. Okay, let's move forward to another really important, intense emotion day in this life. What are you doing? I'm giving my mom her keys to a new house. Okay. Who bought the house? That was my present to her for putting me through college. Describe what what's going on. I'm so proud of my mom. After dad died, she worked so hard. When I told her I wanted to go to medical school, she worked so hard. And she did everything for me. And I promised myself that I would make her life easier. And that's what I've done. I I bought a house for her and I furnished it. She's crying. I told her she'll never have to want for anything anymore in her life. Okay. Now, are you by yourself? No, my wife's here. Tell me about your wife. Her name's Jenny. She's beautiful. She she met me when she was 
working as a volunteer at the hospital. And uh, we got to know each other even more because her mom had heart trouble and she asked me to take care of her mom for her. Do you guys have any children? Yes. She's pregnant. She's about six months with her first one. Oh, okay. Describe the pregnancy. Oh, she's slowly. She's pretty. The little boy, we're so excited. Okay. Let's move forward to one more important day. The most, one of the most important days in this lifetime. What do you see? Debbie's been sick for a long time. Having to hold her hair, knowing that she's going to die soon. I'm trying to comfort my son and my grandchildren and let them know that she's had a good life. Okay. Let's move forward to the last day of your life. We've gone forward to the last day of your life in this lifetime we're watching. What do you see? See my son. He's so handsome. He's so proud of him. He's been a great father, a great son. I'm so proud of his life. I'm surrounded by my family. I love such a good life. Now whatever happened has already happened. And you're on the other side of it. As you look at the life from the spirit world, what did you learn from that lifetime? Everything's meant. Even though I didn't want to lose my dad, it was it was a lesson I had to learn for me to be who I was. Look at all the lives I saved, even though I lost my dad. Yeah. And what was the purpose of this lifetime? get back to love my mother. Okay. I want you to drift away and float from that scene and leave the person there to continue their own path. We can, now you can either move forward backwards, you can move to parallel, you can move anywhere you want and find another appropriate time and place. So you're floating on the cloud to another appropriate time and place and you're there now. What do you see? I'm healing someone. How are you healing them? I'm doing anything. I'm showing them how to heal themselves. Yeah. Are you male or female? Female. Young or old? Okay. And tell me about what you do for work. What do you do all day? I do Reiki. I do like, like spirit guides. I just do a lot of spiritual work with people. I help them. 
pass through time and space to heal themselves. Okay. And how do they pass through time and space to heal themselves? I guide them for it. I ask that their angels and guardians and whoever is in, and my guardians step in. Okay. And I want you to move to a very important day in this life, a very intense emotion day. What is happening? I'm spending time with my Joe. And who is Joe? He's my guardian. What are you guys doing? Oh, we're talking about life and lessons and things I'm learning. How to evolve into higher self. Okay. And how do you how does do you evolve into higher self? Ah, uh, saying that I need to continue to do Reiki and meditation. Work with crystals. Okay. Let's move to another important day in this life. What is happening? I'm teaching someone. I'm passing on wisdom. Okay. And what kind of wisdom are you passing on? How to help people heal. Okay. And let's move forward again to another significant part of this life. One of the most significant parts of this life. What are you doing? Crying. Why are you crying? Joe's telling me that it's time for me to evolve into higher self. I don't know if I'm ready. What What is Joe Joe saying for how you can evolve? wants me to leave this body and go to the spirit where I came from. Okay. I don't know if I'm ready to leave. Why what 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 is holding you from leaving? I like it here. Why do you like it here? I enjoy Watching people grow. Yeah. Is Joe watching people grow from his his view? In the spirit? Yeah. But I keep telling Joe it's different than being an observer and a participant. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that you're doing? Today? Yes, in a way, I'm trying to get everything in order. For what? Because I know that those that are left behind must carry on the job. Left behind what? All those that I've passed wisdom on, they must carry on the work. Now we're going to move forward to the last day of your life. What do you see? Bright light. Mm -hmm. What is happening? What? 
And what are you, and where are you going? I'm going back to source. Okay. And describe your experience. It's beautiful. It's like everything I've ever wanted to know is being fed into me. Okay. Is there anything in particular that you are really happy to get back in terms of knowledge? That I can still be productive up here. You know, I forgot about that. Okay. Is there anything you're excited about doing in the spirit side? Oh, finishing doing my work from the other side. And what work is that? Oh, planting seeds in people's lives. I'm a seed planter. I give them hope. Give them courage. Mm-hmm. And how do you do that from the other side? I whisper to their hearts. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, what do you look like? Do you describe your features? Do you have any features? I'm just a shimmery light. Kind of looking at a crystal or glitter, bright, shiny, translucent. Okay. As you look at the previous life that you just had, that you died from, what do you think was the purpose of that lifetime? I think for me it was guide. I was there to guide in a silent little way. Planting the seeds and guiding people. Did you learn anything from it? I can't fix anybody. That is only their job. I am only a planter. And what, from looking at the last life from the spirit side, what new perspectives do you have about, about that lifetime? No matter how many struggles it was worth it, it was beautiful. Okay. Now let's get back in the cloud and leave this scene. Now that you've revisited some significant memories, let's move forward in time to a future time in this life or another important future lifetime. The cloud is coming down. What do you see? In school. What are you studying? Addiction studies. Social work, trying to understand things. Okay. And how how are you doing in school? Better than I thought. I've been scared. I'm doing things well. Okay. Let's move forward to a very important day in this life. What do you see? I need it for through my first AA. I'm getting ready to apply for my bachelor's. And are you male or female? I'm female. What age are you? The age I am now. Okay. Let's move forward to another very significant day in this life that has intense emotion. What do you see? I'm in the ER at Harborview. What are you doing? I'm the social worker on the night shift. Okay. 
Can you describe the scene around you? There's this poor young little girl. She's ravaged with addiction. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to save her, but I have to remember that's not my job. It's my first night on the ship by myself. Okay. So what do you do? I asked Joe to help me to give me the strength to get through this night to do the best that I can for her with what I have. And how do you deal with the situation? I give her my humanness. I let her know that I'm just like her. Let's move forward to another very significant experience in this life. One of the most significant days. What do you see? My dreams come true. Describe that. I've opened up a center for recovery. What does it look like? It's beautiful and warm. And it's nothing like anybody's ever had before. It's for any kind of recovery. I don't care what you call it. Okay. I want people to know that their healing starts with spiritual pathways. Okay. And describe what's going on in the recovery center. I've got different people that I trust to do different types of healing work, like Reiki and sound bowls and chanting and drumming circles and massage. And I have this room set up for people to talk about what they're struggling with. And there's all these ideas in a bowl about what spiritual pathways may work for them. And I'm so excited to be able to offer this to people. Mm-hmm. Is it a, can you describe the building? It's round. The outside is kind of brownish color and it's got all these shrubs around it and inside it's got this central room in the center that's like the, the hub of everything and people can sit around this little fountain I put in the center and it's got this little bitty fountain of water going so it's so peaceful and calming and there's this little area and if you want to call it a reception, but we set it up to where it's inviting and people would want to go and talk to someone there. And there's just beautiful colors and it's bright and cheery and loving. And Is it a lot of people that go to this center? It's just opening. It's just opening. Okay. Okay. Let's move forward to the last day of your life. In this lifetime, what do you see? I've asked to die in the center. So they've set me up in a room. Clients, past clients, all these wonderful people that have touched my life or around me. Okay. So you have you have died and you move on to the other side now. In the spirit world, looking back at this life, what did you learn? I didn't accomplish anything. And what do you think the purpose of this lifetime was? To know that I'm powerful. To know that I'm weak. Now, this person is, we're done at the scene, and this person has receded back to their life to continue in time. Okay. 
Now, now we're going to move from looking at the lifetimes that your subconscious wanted you to see and move to talking to your subconscious. May I speak to Ginger's subconscious, please? Yeah. I have permission to speak to Ginger's subconscious? Yes. I respect the power of the subconscious because I know the subconscious takes care of Ginger's body and does a very good job of it. I also know that the subconscious has the records of everything that has ever happened to Ginger in this lifetime and all the other lifetimes that she has ever lived. So I respect the power of the subconscious and I always ask for permission to speak to it and ask questions. Do I have permission to ask questions? Yes. You chose to bring forward these lifetimes for Ginger to see. Why did you pick the first lifetime when she was a ring that is part of Saturn? She knows to know that she is more. More than what? More than this body. Why did Ginger incarnate from being a ring around Saturn to being a woman on Earth, given birth? Because we all birth into this world. Into Earth? Into the universe. Into the universe. Okay. And what was the pur- purpose of Ginger having the two lifetimes where she is a male cardiologist? She needs to know that she is male and female. Okay. And the, f- the, f- the lifetime following that, she's a female that opens up a recovery center. What is the purpose of showing her that lifetime? She is a healer. And what is the theme of all these lifetimes that you are trying to reveal to her? She is a healer. So, Ginger has a couple more questions specifically to the life that she is living now. And she wanted to ask you of them. Okay. So, her, her parents, Nolan and Norma, she wants to know since he was not supportive of her interests, why he was so fearful of her failing and preventing her from doing anything that she wanted. Because he was raised to believe he was a failure. By who? By his father. And so... He just continued the pattern to his daughter? He knows no mother. Okay. He was also a very religious person, but also a hypocrite at the same time. Um, And he did not allow Ginger to have a relationship with her mom when he was around. What What was the intent behind that in her life? He was a lost soul. 
And Ginger felt that she that she was abandoned by her mother after their divorce, and she regrets having an affair with her mother's boyfriend at the time, and that he almost got her into prostitution. She wants to know. She wants to know why those events happened and why. What is, she, what is she supposed to take out of it? She is not a victim. What what kind of lessons is she supposed to learn from those experiences? She has always felt as a victim. She must empower herself. She has more similar questions about um, her uncle, who molested her and her daughter. And Ginger also wonders if she ever had a sexual relationship with her father. Did she have a sexual relationship with her father? No. Why does she think that? See what's meant to by who? Mother. Why why did the mother implant that 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 seed? Mother had planted seed because seed was planted in mother by her family. Was her mother also molested by her dad? Junior's mother suffered many abuse, so she trusts no man. So she must plant seed of distrust of them into Ginger. Yes. But she, but Ginger never had an affair with her father. No. What was what what was the purpose of her Ginger's uncle molesting her daughter? He carried on tradition. Must keep passing, passing. What what advice can you give Ginger about her whole her family's experience with incest and abuse? It is ending. It is ending. Ginger also. Wants to know why her daughter, Brenda, changed her name to Caitlin. She's upset about this. What advice can you give her about that? Can you understand? Brenda, the name signifies too much hurt, too much pain. Ginger must get over and allow daughter to evolve. So, so changing her name to Caitlin was her way of moving beyond the pain. Is that it? Yes. Okay. And what suggestions do you have for Ginger to learn how to accept this this easier? Junior must realize that she evolved from just her child. When it comes to Ginger's son, Ginger abandoned her kids for another man, for a man. She feels that she lacks maternal instinct. Can you give her any insight about this? Ginger is just a vessel. Sad to say. She was never meant to be mother to child, only to birth said child. What what was the purpose of her children being born through her if they were not going to have 
a mother that's maternal to them. They had to learn why they chose to have a motherless mother. When it comes to Ginger's daughter, Samantha, she was born sick with SIDS and was always sick. And she eventually became an addict. Ginger feels that she doesn't meet her expectations. And she feels that she never will. What, what, what insight can you give Ginger about her daughter, Samantha? Samantha is not hers. Who's is she? She is Ginger's mother's. That is why there is no connection between Samantha and Ginger. So how come Samantha was not born to Ginger's mom? She was. So why did she come back again to Ginger? Because she wanted to be back with mother sooner than time allowed. Because of what? She did not wait for the evolution of life to be reincarnated. She wanted to be here sooner. So being born, so Samantha being born through Ginger as a surrogate would be her way to be present with her mom again, who is now her grandma? Yes. Did Samantha get what she wanted? Not really. She was connected to mother. But she has a void because she still feels connected to Ginger. Okay. And how can Ginger help Samantha with the void? There's nothing Ginger can do. It is Samantha's evolution. Ginger feels that she wished that she never knew her grandson existed because it's too painful because she is not allowed to be part of his life. Samantha permits it, does not permit it. What insight can you give her about that? Ginger is in Liam's life. How? Through the spirit. Will Ginger be able to be part of his life physically? Unknown at this time. What suggestions can you give Ginger when it comes to trying to have a relationship with her grandson? Be present. Only then can he be accepted. Who who is accepting him? The spirit. What what spirit? Any Ginger's spirit must be accepting of his spirit. Because he is on a different plane than his mother. And though they are not connected physically, her and Liam are spiritually connected. Ginger and Liam? Yes. What? Ginger also wants to know about Jules, which is her close friend. And she feels that it's really painful not to have her in her life but was happy to connect again at, at Ocean Shores. Can you give can you give her some insight about how she can connect with a friend again? It must be time. Jules is evolving. You are evolving. Give time. So Ginger needs to be patient? Yes. Should she reach out to Jules or wait for Jules to reach to her? Wait, wait. But Jules will come around and contact Ginger? Yes. Okay. Ginger wants to know why she has spasms in her throat. Ginger does not use her voice. So these spasms are a reminder that she is not speaking yeah, with intent. Yes, and clarity. Okay. Um, uh, 
What do you suggest she do to fix that? Ginger must believe. In Ginger's career, she never worked before. Now she's working. What What is the next steps that she can do to help her career out? She is doing them. She's doing them. She also wants to know if she's going to be able to find a companion that she can be with for for a long, long time. Can you give her any insight on that? That is unknown. Her path is very delicate, very twisted. We don't want to interfere in Okay. If she wanted to have a companion, what does she need to do to track one? They must fully understand her past has a purpose and cannot interfere with that path. When it comes to Ginger's father, she wants to know what happened in her dad's childhood that wounded him and made him the way he is. Father was abused. Okay. And when it comes to her mother, she wants to know if her mother forgave her for putting her in a nursing home. That was part of evolution. Mom never looked down upon Ginger. Okay. But Mom has peace now? Mom has always had peace. Okay. Um. She wants to. She wants to know. What was the purpose of not adopting out Brenda? Brenda should have been adopted. Why? She was not meant to be with Junior. What advice can you give? Ginger about Brenda to know that her path has fixed itself that her daughter's path has fixed itself yes she is on her new path the one that she was supposed to be on if you if Ginger had adopted her out no she created a new path she created a new path okay. and what is that path Unknown to us, okay. only to child. Only to child, okay. When it comes to Ginger's son, Jacob, would Ginger ever have a relationship with Jacob? Very doubtful. What advice can you give Ginger to learn to work with that information? She must understand child is on this path. But it may not include her? That path does not look like Ginger's path. Okay. Now, Ginger wants to know a little bit more about her sister Paula. Is Paula an older soul than Ginger? Paula is evolved. Okay. In what way? She is higher evolved than said ginger. Okay. What what things can she learn from her sister? Examples what not to do how to love. Ginger wants to know if she's gonna have a healthy relationship with her brother. In time. Okay. So should she be patient? Ginger must be patient with brother. Okay. And she she also wants to know if she has mental health. She has never had mental health. 
Well, what then? Can you explain to her what these spirits in her in her head are? They are higher selves. They are the collective. And what can you give her insights and suggestions for how she can exist more peacefully and balance with the collective? Because there is already doing such things. Ginger just must listen. Okay. Ginger wants to know what she could do to have a healthy sex life. Ginger must understand that that is human. That is innate in her. There is no shame. What is the source of her repressed sexual guilt? The sexual trauma the mother sees. How can, how can Ginger let this go? She must explore sexuality and not be afraid. And how can she go about doing that? She needs to start looking at her books. Okay. Who is Joe the alien? Joe is her higher self. He is her guiding source, her protector. Okay. And is Joe satisfied with the progress that she's making in this life? Joe is always happy with gender. Okay. He can never be disappointed in Ginger as Ginger and Joe are one. Okay. When it comes to physical pains that Ginger is dealing with in her body, last July she had a car accident, and at the same time she had a loss of job, and she was released from a mental health clinic. She's disconnected with her best friend and her daughter. What is the purpose of all that happening at the same time? Ginger needs to learn to take care of Ginger. Now, she hurt her neck for the second time. What's the lesson behind that injury? She must protect herself. So, do you need to be more aware yes. and observant? Yes, there are too many things in her life that she's allowed. Like what? Physical, emotional, spiritual, sexual pain. She must learn a lesson. So Ginger needs to does Ginger need to create more boundaries so that she can protect herself from um, healthy boundaries. Healthy boundaries. So Ginger does not know what healthy boundaries is. She must evolve and learn, study and grow. Okay. Would it be beneficial for Ginger to take different topics in her life that she needs to set boundaries for? She and must to evolve. And would it be good for her to do research on how to create healthy boundaries and follow healthy processes or healthy activities to live a more balanced life in different areas? Absolutely. Most of all. Most of all. And by doing this, her neck pain, what will happen to it? All will recede. All will get better. All will get better. What about the bone spurs in her right shoulder? She wants to avoid surgery. What can you say about that? That is just a manifestation of others. Others of what? Of all the guilt, shame, and remorse that is built up in her body. And she was spiritually released to the other. Who is the other? To the universe. The universe, okay. Can you... Ginger would like the pain in her body corrected. And you've explained what it causes. 
if she wants to release it. May we have a healing on Ginger to release all the things that Ginger no longer needs, that are no longer important, that she's still hanging on to, that she no, no longer needs to keep moving forward. Ginger can heal any time. How can she do that? She must stop. 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 Can you rebuild Ginger's shoulders for her? In time. In time. Okay. By her creating her own boundaries, in time you will, you will heal that? That is one way. That's one way. What's another way? She must move past the fear of working. In a job? In all areas of her life. Okay. She holds on to the pain for fear of moving forward. And that's my, uh, is the pain manifesting in the shoulder and the neck pain? Yes. Okay. Um, why does Ginger have pain on her left stomach? Is it the same, the same thing as her neck pain and her shoulder pain? That is a child. Can you tell us more about the child? That is the child she lost out of fear. What age was she when she lost that? <sighs> Probably... Eighteen. Eighteen. Did she know that she was pregnant at the time? She was unsure at the time. Uh, she was unsure? And is, what's happened to that side of the stomach now? Is it, what is it? What is there? The baby just wants to be acknowledged. Okay. And has Ginger acknowledged the baby? Ginger has never acknowledged baby because baby never existed. Okay. What do you recommend her, her do about the, that information? She must do energy healing for baby and allow baby to go to spirit. Where is the baby now? The baby just hovers. Just hovers on the left side. Every now and then bringing pain to Ginger to remind Ginger or try to bring awakening to Ginger. And once Ginger does energy work on the left side of her stomach and acknowledges the baby, what will happen to the pain? Pain will go away. Will go away. baby will go away. Okay. And the baby will move to the spirit world and... Baby can't move yet because he has bound her. He is bound to her. But once she releases the bounding, the binding, he will move on? Yes. What is, what is his life going to be? He moves back to spirit. He chooses a new evolution. He chooses another path. We do not know that path. Okay. Why does Ginger attract bad relationships? And what can Ginger do moving forward to have healthy relationships? Ginger had a lot of negativity put into her soul. She must release that negativity. Once all is released, the brightness of this universe will come into her spirit. She will contract great things into her life. Okay. And the great things that she will attract in her life once she releases negativity and creates positive boundaries and does the recommendations um, that you have set forth for her, can you give some idea of what, what she can experience moving forward, what she can look forward to? Her wildest dreams. Ginger has some hesitation about her career path. Do you have anything, any advice or suggestions that would help her out with her first career? 
She must trust her pathway. She is a healer. She must infiltrate. Okay. Infiltrate what? The system. The system is broken. And we can only change the brokenness without the having the healer. Okay. Can you give Ginger spiritual Ginger spiritual support network? Um, she would love some courage and confidence. And Ginger would love her spiritual network to give her signs to provide her positive affirmations that she is on the right track. Can you... What are some of the signs that she can look out for if her spirit guides or spirit support network is going to give her? One, there's always been music. Music speaks to the soul of gender. Okay. Are there any other signs that that she can look out for that will the will be a reminder that this is that you that you gave her or that somebody gave her to remind her she's on the right track? She must get back to her spirituality. She needs to be meditating with crystals, communing with us. There we speak. And who is us? The collective. Okay. Now, Gigi can't sleep at night. Can you help her out with that? We will try to silence the mind. And what what are some of the things that she is being kept up at night about? Heart is trauma from past. Can you help Ginger let go of the pain? Yes, we as collective will work. Will you heal the wounds that Ginger lived through? We are working with Ginger now. Okay. Are her wounds from her past lodged in the parts of the body that she has outlined, such as her forehead, right shoulders, the shoulders, the neck, and the lower back. Those are places where it hides. Can you remove those pains for her? In time. In time. Okay. After she does the suggestions that you give her? Yes. Okay. Must evolve to remove. So she must do the work and then you'll remove them. Absolutely. Uh, she misses her mom. And thank you for bringing her forth in one of the regressions. Does the mother have any other messages that she wants to give Ginger with her journey moving forward? Mom is ever present. We do not know when she is ever present. Okay. And Ginger really wants to exercise and eat better and just have a healthier lifestyle. Can you give Ginger insight into what her body will feel like when she lives an active, healthy lifestyle? She wants to know what that will feel like, and that would maybe help her get a determination to follow through with that. She doesn't like how she feels right now in her current body. We will start planting. There are a couple of set questions um, as well that we're going through. And why did she choose them? She knew that she would live a hard life. Her mother was one of strength and courage through diversity and strength. She has learned and must learn. Okay. And what lessons can Ginger learn through the recurring themes in her life? 
And she does not have to be bound to those things. And the last question is, what advice can you give Ginger to have peaceful relationships and a balanced lifestyle for the rest of his life? She must find love and happiness within. Is there any last messages that you want Ginger to know? Ginger must know that she is all-knowing and all-powerful. She must not doubt. She has all the answers within her. Now I'm going to ask the subconscious to receive to where it belongs. 